Okay, so I did my rapid problem solving on the template positive line, like Jack. Uh, the reason being there was a lot of data. So Jack focused on rejects, I looked at downtime. So when I looked at my current downtime for the month of June, it was 715 minutes of downtime. Now we didn't have a clear target of what acceptable was, so we got together with the teams. We looked at 15 minutes a day would be good. So times in that out by the month, we said our standard would be 300 minutes over the month is what's acceptable. And you can see there, we have a performance loss gap of 315 minutes. So I broke that problem down into a Pareto. Out of the 715 minutes, 198 of them was coming from label change. So that was the, pr the problem to pursue. So label change causing 198 minutes of performance loss, and it's equated to 63% of the gap. So looking at, at the containment, there was nothing that we could do straight away to contain the issue and stop that, that reduce that performance loss straight away. So I, we used this step to look into the data a little bit deeper. So we looked at the average trend, and over the last three months we could see an increase in trend on label performance, label change performance, sorry. And another little bit of data we looked at, we compared the template positive line with the template negative line. So it was interesting to see that the positive line was trending upwards from three minutes, just under four, increasing to over four minutes, whereas the template negative line here in blue was reducing down and they was averaging about two minutes per changeover. So them, them lines are both exactly the same. So it was interesting seeing how could one be performing at four minutes, the other one was performing at two minutes. So taking that into the direct cause, we looked at the fishbone, we looked at a couple of different options. Now, we, we were looking for evidence to prove what the direct cause was, so what was that light switch that, when that was present, that we seen the issue, when we removed that, the issue was gone. So, we looked at the temperature of labels, we was, was able to disprove that, so with the two teller system, we could see that there was no temperature, temperature deviation through the labs. We also looked at lab ergonomics, so we did a spaghetti diagram down in the negative lab, we also did a spaghetti diagram in the positive lab, and there wasn't massive amounts of movement, so that was an initial thought that had the positive team moving further to make that label change, and is that causing it? No, we disproved that. We also said, potentially, could it be the print head settings? And again, we disproved that. We looked at the, the settings on the negative line, we looked at the settings on the positive line, and said it wasn't that. We then looked at training, and this is where we were able to find a little bit of evidence that could be causing this issue. So, George has been working on training guides for each of the different lines, each of the different areas, we found that there was a training guide in place for the template negative line. There wasn't a training guide in place for the template positive line. So I was able to directly prove that training was different between the two. And that was a, a direct cause that one department was doing it to a standard and they was trained. The other department were kind of varying in how they was doing it because they wasn't trained the same way. And that links me into my other little bit. I used that as evidence to say that no standard was a potential root cause. The operator, we did some video analysis and I also went into the lab. And it was interesting, when I videoed the template positive operator, they managed to hit their changeover at about two minutes. But then when I went and watched multiple operators, it was interesting to see the variance. So it was obvious that in positive, they can hit this time, but they're not consistently hitting that time on an average, which is again, linked into my direct cause about the, the standard of training, or training to a standard, sorry. So from here, I looked at my root cause. So my direct cause was training, and the why for that was that operators were not trained to a standard. The why, again, is that no training guide was in place for the template positive labs. And then looking at the no standard, operators are not performing a changeover to a standard. Why? Because changeovers are not tracked or trended. Why are they not tracked or trended? Because there's no standard time for expected changeovers. So the two aspects of that is that one was, there was doing it different operator to operator, but there also wasn't a standard to say what is a good change over time, so what is that standard? And it was interesting to see that once we implemented that standard or started discussing that standard, we automatically seen a drop in, in performance in the template positive lab. And it was really interesting to see that because the eyes were kind of on change over times as such, they increased. So without actually directly doing anything physically, just the discussions with the teams around change over time, saw a reduction in change over time, which I thought was interesting. So we moved on to the countermeasure plan. So the first two actions that I set was around the training guides. 
So he's going to create a training guide, which is still an ongoing action. So I believe the template positive team now are working with Georgia and they're going to be making a training guide in, in connection. So it looks the same as the template negatives and the negative and positive teams are working together to make sure that they're both doing it the same way. Um, there's a little bit that's a more of a long ongoing issue, which is like around training the trainer. So I know we did have a new starter in the positive line around this time. So was that, was that a potential factor? We didn't have any proof to say it was di that was a direct cause. But with trainer training, if we have the training guides and we're delivering the training in a, a standard way, that's going to have an impact on it. And then with no standard time for changeover, expected changeovers, we needed to create a standard. So I met with the teams and we said that we're going to go for a standard changeover time of two minutes. Both template positive and template negative will work to that standard and that will allow us to see if we're winning or losing. Where at the minute we don't really have anything of what good looks like. So that, they're the three actions I've implemented and you can see there the impact that this has had. So we're still working to our target of 300. We're now at 495. Now if you used to look at that and compare it straight away we're still above target. But what we have done, we've reduced it. So when you break this down further into the Pareto, label change was accounted for 198 minutes, which was 63% of the gap. Label change now is only at, is at 60 minutes. So even though we've not completely closed the gap on overall downtime on the positive line, what we have done is we've focused on the single problem and we've closed the gap for that single area. So this is why I asked Jack question tactically earlier. So Jack's done, worked on rejects and come down to bad print, bad label. So looking at the downtime now on the template positive line, the top area of concern is print quality. So both mine and Jack's um, RPSs have kind of come together now to say the big issue on, you know, on the template positive line is print quality, bad labels. So that's a nice next step for us to, to go into. Um, yeah, so next steps is the print quality. Personal reflections from myself, um, that without a standard, so without saying how what's, what does good look like, it's impossible to uh, know if you're winning or losing. So like it's clear with a positive team that when nobody was asking about label changeovers, it was just ticking over like two minutes on average higher than the negative lab. But as soon as we started talking about standards and putting that in there, that started to come, come down. Um, so that's, the RPS with regards to what worked well. Um, I really like the clear definition of this is where we need to be, this is where we are, and highlighting that gap. I think if we can start talking in this language across the site, it's like a universal language. You can say this is where we need to be, this is where we are. It doesn't matter where you work, it's really clear when you go in, you can see we're either above or over target. <coughs> I also like the fishbone. So a lot of times in the past when we've done fishbone, it's been very opinion based. I think it's this, so let's do this action. Whereas by talking about the light bulb and the direct cause, you're actually saying, I think it's this, and here's my evidence to back it up. It's no longer an opinion. You're actually going through with it. Uh, so I really like the direct cause section, and then keep, and again, keeping the gap at the end, to the be same as the beginning, so you can kind of see that impact straight through. What didn't work so well? I think in this case for myself, the containment section, I struggled to get an actual containment, the who, what, where, when, why, and how much. I struggled to apply that to a downtime, so I kind of used that to dig into the data a little bit more. Um, and I also struggled a little bit to get the business impact. So I, I understand, I was, I was asking some questions, and I understood how much our labor costs and our, uh, per hour, and I could impact that. But then I struggled to get the, the whole figure, really, of materials, rejects, downtime, how much does... How much is a minute worth in the positive lab? I struggle to find that information. Um, but that's not nothing wrong with the, the framework, that's just my experience. Um, and that's it, pretty much really, from myself. Okay, any so questions? We've got, we've got a minute for any uh, add-on questions. I think you've answered lots of uh, questions in there. I, 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 I think a comment takeaway from me is that I really like that we're starting to realise this you know, when we're working to a pre we don't just tackle the first one, we tackle the first one and it allows us to put that level of focus onto it. But then, from a continuous improvement point of view, we never stop, right? We've got to tackle the next one, the next one. And if you carry on doing that, in this example, you and Jack have sort of tag team on inadvertently, you're going to see that pre drop and shorten. Yeah. And ultimately, what we'll be doing is, is taking waste out of the whole process. So it's nice to see that we're sort of, we never give up. We're continually chasing that, that next yeah. level of perfection. And then what we can do as well is rather than trying to tackle 
everything to bring us below the 300. We just focused on the one, and even though we're still above target, it's still a win as such because we've done exactly. what's in our control. Absolutely. So, so last question from Dave. Um, you said you haven't got a standard for a changeover in mm -hmm. terms of time, which yeah. I think is really interesting. Yeah. How do you know then what your interval needs to be to run on a particular line? So how do you how do you decide what the batch size is that you're going to run on the line if you don't know what? Batch so, so this is one that I went down. I looked at potential. Root cars on was motivation. So are the operators motivated to do it quick enough uh, to do it as fast as they possibly can? Now in the positive line, the batteries are relatively small, so they have time before and after really to within the day. They're always going to get that batch done regardless of of how quickly they do the changeover. Um, That's why you're using batch management rather than continuous production. So you might say you have eight hours to do what in reality batch process is about six hours worth of work. Where an opportunity by looking at these is you could turn the eight hours into bringing in more production, mm -hmm. making it more continuous. Yeah. I think when you're back on the seventh, I would love to get into the subject a little deeper. Yeah. It's um, one of my observations as well, which is I don't think they're not, they're not batch sizes have been created independently or <coughs> what you can do. Yeah. Right, okay, yeah. That, that, that yeah. was really my point. Yeah, and that would be really great if we could start tapping yeah. into yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. okay, thank so, you, Liz. Just one. Oh, yeah. I think this is great because you've You've identified a problem, you've identified a root cause. Mm -hmm. I'd love to unpick some of this more with it, with the other opportunities. How can we reduce the number of label changes that we need to do? Yeah. We've spoken in the past about bigger bigger label reels so you don't have to do them as much. You know, all yeah. these aim ideas. Is there any that's come from this which we can pick so up? It's interesting. Push? So James was in my group yeah. and when we got initially started talking about <laughs> containment, I said to contain this issue, we're only going to use the big back sizes, yeah. big rolls. But then if you looked at that, what that would have done to James's RPS, that just meant we had more scrap. Yeah. So he was trying to balance it yeah, in each way. I, it, 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 it does. I, I didn't mind it. Was unless a bit of going unless down, we change our quality so we don't have eight to ten thousand, we have nine and a half to ten thousand, so we're still using them in a different yeah. way. But mm -hmm. Same amount of labels, mm -hmm. but we use them more effectively. Yeah. Okay, thank you. a round of applause for you, yeah, please. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest lean content.